Hello and welcome back to Microsoft Excel. So today we're going to look at creating macros. Um, now to create a macro we're going to first look at examples of recording a macro and then we'll also see how we can view the code um, once the macro has been recorded. Before we begin this though we need a special tab to be available. The tab that we need to be available is known as the developer tab. Notice how it says developer. This tab host all the commands and groups of commands that we will be using in order to work with macros and VBA code. So to make sure that this tab is available to you, we shall first go to the backstage view, which you may recall is also known as the file tab. And from here, we will choose the options option on the left side of the screen. When you do so, the Excel Options dialog box will appear. From the left side of the menu, you can select Customize Ribbon. This will allow us to customize the tabs that we see on our ribbon. Remember where the point of this is to make sure that the Developer tab is accessible from the ribbon. You'll notice that in the right side of your screen, you then see all the main tabs that appear on the ribbon currently. You will notice that some are checked. Some of yours may not be checked. If it has a check mark, that means it is currently viewable on your ribbon. We're interested again in the developer tab. In this case, the developer tab is checked. If it were not, I would then select it. And if you want to get fancy, you can also go within the groups that are there and sometimes change that as well. This is also where you could add new tabs and new groups if you wanted to create some based on commands that you have available in Excel. And if you wanted to download any add-ins and add those in, you could do that here as well. But for now, that's all we want to make sure that the developer tab is accessible. I will now click OK. And the developer tab is accessible. So before we begin recording a macro, remember with programming, you must first describe the problem or denote the problem that you want to uh, accomplish or fix. In this case, I will just like to change this color of a selected cell to be the color blue. So in order to perform this task, I now need to make a plan. Remember that was step two of programming. In order to make a plan for changing the color of the blue, I know that if I want to change cell A1 to blue, with it being the active cell currently, I would first go to the Home tab, and then in the Font group, I would select the drop-down option for the Fill Color, and I would select the color blue. Now it would be whatever blue I would like to use. There's dark blue here, there's blue, and then there is also a light blue. I'm just going to select blue. And now the cell has the active cells color has been changed to blue. So not only have I made my plan, I have practiced my plan. This will be very important because we are going to be recording a macro. And anytime you record something, unless you're trying to record spontaneous actions, you always like to have a plan before you record. Think of it as an actor coming on the screen. Would you rather that Brad Pitt improv or would you rather for him to follow the script that the director created? You probably would prefer for him to follow the script because he's probably not as funny if he doesn't. Anyway, now that we know exactly the plan of action that we shall follow in order to solve the problem of taking our active cell and making it blue, I will then clear the fill that is here. And the only reason is just to reset it back to what it was because now that this, the stage has been reset, we shall now perform the action that we want to in order to solve the problem. Remember again, we are changing the active cell to blue and we have our plan and action to do that. So now we are ready to record. If we go back to the developer tab, you will notice that we have four groups here. The two groups that we'll be looking at will be the code group and the controls group. The code group is where we will host our macros and begin recording them and also make some changes to them uh, such as security um, and also if 
it will be whatever we record is relative or is absolute in reference. You've already discussed absolute and relative references um, in regards to cells when you were doing functions and formulas. It is no different here. Controls we will look at when we are adding controls such as buttons or text box editors um, or other form um, controls that we may want to have and also how to view the code that is currently attached to macros that we've created or that may be assigned to various controls. For right now, again, we're just recording. So I am going to select record macro. I should only select record macro if I am ready to record. In this case, I am ready to record. Remember, we are going to make the active cell fill color blue. I select record macro. Before I begin, it asks for my macro name. You want to give your macro name a obvious name that, de that denotes what exactly your macro is doing. In this case, this is going to make our active cell blue. So I am going to call it make me blue. Now I actually just typed a mistake because when we record a macro, you cannot have spaces. It must be one whole word. You also cannot use certain special characters. Now, in order to make a appropriate name in this case, um, dependent on where you are, a lot of people, a lot of coders will do a hump case, which means you start off with your um, your first your first word, your second word you have a uppercase, and then your next word you have an uppercase to the note that you are changing the word. Other people will sometimes use underscores. Notice that the next option is to create a shortcut key. You may be used to whenever you copy, you use Control C. And when you paste, you use Control V. When you cut, you use Control X. When you save, you use Control S. This is the type of shortcut key we are talking about. You also can decide where are you storing this. We are going to store this onto this workbook, which is already selected. Other options would be to a new workbook or to a personal macro workbook. The last thing is a description. A description is always great so that you know exactly what your code is doing. In this case, we are going to again be making the active cell blue. Now that we have our description and we have our macro name and we have where our macro will be stored in and the shortcut key that we're using, let's get started. Notice then in the code group that the command that said record macro now says stop recording. That's because we are currently recording. Also in the status bar at the bottom, notice how it's um, it has changed a new symbol. It has a stop symbol which we can select to stop recording. Remember we what we are recording is we are going to take the active cell and make it blue. The active cell is already selected. We do not need to select any other cells. We are just going to make it blue. Whenever you are recording a macro, it records everything that you do, every step and changes that you make. So if we were to select another cell and then select A1 again, it will record that. That is why it is important in this instance to not select anything else. All we want to do is make the active cell blue. So as we practiced before, we'll follow our script. We go to the Home tab. In the Font group, we select the Fill Color dropdown. We then select the color blue. With the color blue selected, we have completed the work that we wanted to do. So now we will start recording. I can go back to the developer tab, or I could select start recording from the status bar. But in this case, in the developer tab, I will go back to the code group and select start recording. Once I have done this, if I were to click macros, you would see make me blue is there. If I select another cell now, any cell, and I go to macros command, I click run, it shall now make it blue, no matter what. If I had created a shortcut key for it, I could uh, use the shortcut key in order to make any active, any active cell blue. Notice because I said active cells, if I select multiple cells, they are now active. And when I run my macro, it, so it changes all selected cells to blue. 
Now the cool part about this is that not only have I recorded a macro that will make any active cells blue, I also can see the code that is created in the background as if I had typed out the code myself. If I go to macros, I can click edit. In doing so, Microsoft Visual Basic for Applications open. Visual Basic for Applications is also known as VBA, and you may hear it called VBA throughout this course. You see that a subroutine or a function has been created known, known as Make Me Blue, which was the name of the macro we gave it. In green text with quotations at the front of the lines, you will notice that uh, we have the name of the macro, Make Me Blue macro, and the description that we typed in earlier, Makes Active Cell Blue. This green text with the quotes in front of it is known as comments. Comments are great because they help describe exactly what is going on in your code. A lot of users use it to document what is happening be before you actually have the code written, such as in this example. But also, comments are often used above lines of code to denote to future users or future coders exactly what is happening in the code at that point in time. But as you see here, basic is pretty basic to understand. For instance, we took active cells that were currently selected and changed them to be blue. Well, if you look here, the code says with selection dot interior, with what selection? We selected cells, our active cells. The interior, the inside of it. And it has a solid pattern, pattern color, it says it's automatic, and then it has a color here. This color that was that is listed is numerical values that actually represent the color blue that we selected with no change in tint or shade and no change in pattern tint or shade. And then it says in with that in with ends the with statement that was started here in sub ends the subroutine that we created here. And this is what the code looks like in the background. This is what is actually happening as we run our make me blue macro. I can always close VBA anytime I would like. And instead of going through the, the code group under the developer tab and selecting macros and selecting edit, what I can do instead is under the controls group, I can go to view code. And underneath modules one, if you've created multiple modules, you may see it under a different module, but it will show the macro that I've created. The last thing that may be useful to you is creating buttons and assigning macros to those buttons to perform the tasks that your macros are programmed to perform. To insert a button, what I can do is under the developer tab in the controls group, I can select insert command. With the insert command selected, take an active X control that you would like to use. In this case, I'm just going to use a button. Notice though that there are several other things that you could use. As, as such as a box, a checkbox, or a text box. You can even have images or radio buttons. Many of these you are used to seeing on several forms and on different websites and web pages. In this case though, we're gonna use it in Excel for our macro. With button selected, I will now make the button to a reasonable size. When I do that, Notice how if I double click it, it gives me a private sub with command button one click. This denotes what will happen when we click on the command button. Instead though, what I am going to do is I am going to right click on my button. And there's also a view code command here and an option to edit it. And what we're going to do here is we're going to select that edit option so that we can change the name. Imagine that if we were to leave it saying command button one, that may be confusing to someone that is expecting the button to make the selected values blue. So instead, what we would like to do is we are going to change the text to say 
make blue. Of course, we could just call it blue. We could call it change cells to blue. We could call it whatever we would like to. This is just a name for the button so that the user knows what exactly the button does. Select our button and we can double click as we did before to bring back up Visual Basic for Applications or as I told you, also known as VBA. We would like for when this command button one is clicked, command button one is clicked, we would like for it to use the make me blue macro that we created earlier. In order to tell it that, we must type the name of that macro. Now, of course, if you do not remember what it was called, you could look it back up. In this case, we called it make me blue. And we will denote to VBA that we are calling that specific function by typing its name out here, make underscore me underscore blue. And it will then look for it within the modules to see what the, does the make me blue macro do. Now at this point, most times people would like to save their uh, files, but we don't have to do that. We can go to file and go to close and return to Microsoft Excel. Of course, you could close it also by using the X in the upper right hand corner. Um, but I would like to show you uh, what this does when we click file and go to close and return to Microsoft Excel. So we do that and we are back in Excel. Now let's check to see if our button works. So I selected I-12 and I'm going to click on the make me blue button and it makes it blue. So as you can see, it works. Now let's try um, checking the macro. As you can see, we check from the macro and, and it still runs perfectly fine. And that is it for uh, creating macros in Excel. So we recorded a macro. We first described the problem that we wanted to accomplish and achieve and take care of. We made a plan. Uh, we were then able to record based off of that plan. And we saw that it creates the code in the background in Visual Basic for Applications for us in VBA. Uh, we were able to test it and make sure that it worked, which it did. Uh, we didn't have any issues, so we didn't have to go back and debug anything. We created documentation when we initially created the macro. Uh, we entered in our description. And we saw that it uh, automatically put the comments into the macro for us in the code. Um, and if we wanted to make any changes for the future, we could add more buttons to do more things. We could even have a button that would say um, create a clear or a no fill into selected cells. So that is it for creating macros. Um, you can do this in any Microsoft Office application, but this is an example in Excel.